Hi, my name is Melissa Nelson Baldwin, and I am co-owner of South Bend Industrial Hemp located in Great Bend, Kansas. And I'm standing in the middle of our industrial hemp fiber field. My background as a crop research scientist is the perfect marriage to my husband and my brother-in-law who are also partners in South Bend Industrial Hemp with their fourth generation farm located here in Great Bend, Kansas. Our goal is to bring industrial hemp and fiber and grain varieties to allow farmers to have another cash crop or another option for farming here in Kansas. South Bend Industrial Hemp started in 2019. We were looking for a way to diversify our farm and bring another commodity into the Kansas economy. That was the first year Kansas was allowed to grow, so we went ahead and applied for the license. We grew 80 acres of dry land hemp for fiber and grain, and it was an absolute disaster. We did everything wrong, which is why our 2020 season was so successful as we had 55 acres underneath a, a pivot. So while we reduced the amount of acreage, we increased the value of that acreage. We had a very successful season. The hemp was approximately 12 to 14 feet tall. We were getting a lot of national traction from media sources and different uh, news outlets and different farmers just asking what we were doing, how we were doing it, where we were selling it. At the end of the 2020 season, we ran into a hiccup. We didn't have a place to sell our crop because our processor had backed out. So we came to a crossroads and the guys and I sat down and we either needed to open a fiber processing facility and be the solution to our problem or we needed to get out of the hemp industry because we were growing it with no place to sell it to. So we jumped in head first, put the down payment on our 660 fiber track decorticator and opened our processing facility June 1st of 2021. This was a big undertaking. We knew we couldn't grow all of those acres ourselves, so we really had to reach out to the farming community in Kansas and surrounding states to help support our vision. During the first year of opening our processing facility, we had 12 farmers that contracted acreage for us and we grew approximately 1,200 acres to supply our processing facility here in Great Bend. Now, as 2022 rolls around, we have increased the acreage on our farm threefold and then we have actually contracted just shy of 2,000 acres throughout Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma to grow for us and our processing facility. So while our growth has been extremely rapid, we are very proud of the foundation and what we are building here in Kansas to continue to push hemp to the forefront and make this an economic and viable option for farmers throughout the United States. We added hemp to the farm as a secondary or another income to the farm to help offset commodity prices that were low and to help reduce input costs on our farm. We're using conventional equipment to plant and harvest our hemp so we don't have to spend extra money on specific equipment so that we can show that any farmer can get this plant in the ground, get it growing and get it harvested without specializing to save on input costs. I feel like growing this hemp is different than corn or soybeans. There's a little bit less work to it in you know secondary applications and stuff because there's you know when we plant corn, soybeans, milo, you know we have to get it in the ground and then we have to come back and do other things as in spraying or cultivating just to uh, keep that crop going. Uh, we started uh, looking at uh, industrial hemp as a subsidy for our farm, basically a way to diversify our farm. Um, Richard and I are fourth generation farmers on our family farm and we were really just looking for a way to help with low commodity prices. Corn prices were very low at that point in time. So it was really just a, a way to diversify our farm and really seemed like a, a viable option. So in 2020, uh, with after we had our crop, our first fiber uh, crop harvested, we actually had or thought we had 
uh, an avenue f for us to sell our fiber to and, and long story short that fell through and we knew that that was a bottleneck in the industry and if this industry was going to grow we needed a way to be able to sell that commodity, sell that crop. If we were going to be leaders in, in this industry we needed to take that next step. Uh, so we set up our decorticating facility here in central Kansas and allowed us to be uh, basically the buyer for this crop for ourselves and for other farmers. Uh, decorticating is basically taking the outside of the hemp stalk and our machine actually strips it off in long pieces and then the inside of the stalk is called herd and it breaks it up into smaller chunks. Our machine is unique to our competitors because it gives us long strand fiber. So if I put a 14 foot long stalk in, I will get a 14 foot long piece of fiber. So that fiber product can be used for quite a few things. Uh, the main one is textiles, so actual clothes like this shirt. Uh, jeans can be made out of it, towels, a whole variety of textiles. Uh, some people are wanting to use it for mulch around their gardens or uh, orchards and the actual press board so like in the ceiling tiles of n most schools that you used to see it can actually be made to do that or insulation. So the products that we mainly uh, look at and, and our products, um, our fiber products out of this facility go to our hempcrete building type products, insulation type products and uh, natural fiber insulations. Also bioplastics um, uh, are becoming a very viable option. The herd, the inside part of the plant can be broke down and micronized and, and really do lots of different things. Also uh, alternative wood products and even uh, animal bedding uh, is, is really a uh, popular outsource as well. So the way we see industrial hemp uh, comparing to uh, conventional uh, competitor type products, uh, petroleum, plastics, or wood lumber type building is we really just want to help subsidize those industries. We want to be, you know, a small part of that or a large part of it, but we're not out to replace petroleum plastics. We don't think we're out to replace, you know, traditional lumber type building. We just want to, to help take a part of that, you know, a five or 10 percent of the petroleum industry and plastics would be a huge benefit. And, and there's lots of ways to, you know, if, if we don't have to use those type of materials for certain products, uh, we realize, of course, you know, we're never going to replace the entire lumber industry. But if we can take a small percentage of that and be more regenerative and, and be more green and, and, and more environmentally friendly in some of those aspects, that, that's just a really big, really big part of what we believe in and what we do. The biggest challenge of a machinery standpoint, just learning, learning the different uh, side of getting things set up and getting going. My role was supporting growers in our growers group is to help them with the settings and with getting planter set up, drill set up, combine set up to harvest our crops. The utilization of rotating with hemp, um, we rotate that way because you know the, the hemp will remediate the soil and help give an additional bump and boost in yields to our next crop and help us out there. You know, we really kind of view this as, as a, a small building block for a large area. We really want to see multiple small facilities over a large area to where we can reduce the transportation costs and reduce uh, the transportation costs in from the farmers and the transportation out to the retailers and to the, to the end users. So lots of smaller facilities that can, that can require, you know, a thousand or two thousand acres in an area versus needing that 10 or 20 20,000 acre um, production scale to, to fill our facilities. So um, more smaller facilities versus large mega facilities. I would like to see our growers group develop by more acres and getting more comfortable with this crop and just turning it into an every year crop that just goes in with everything else, corn and soybeans and milo, just to help them out with some, with some additional income. Uh, the most exciting part would be getting to see and be a part of an industry growing. You know, we started 
I started at the ground floor with all of this and was actually here to help put machines in, learn how to run the machines, get the most we can out of them, and see where everything is continuously progressed, find new markets, and just be a part of start to where we are now. So farmers looking to get into the industrial hemp space and, and to grow this crop really just need to do their homework, number one, um, really vet, you know, the the people that they want to work with and, and have an end goal in in uh, an end goal in mind so they have you know the buyer for the material have the good genetics set up have the proper agronomic support it's really no different than any other crop make sure you have good viable seed make sure you have you know um, growers that can help support you in in the growing needs and and again have make sure you have a place to sell it a place to go with your crop uh, just like any other crop you really don't want to plant anything until you you know you have have a home for it the biggest thing I've learned from ours is we have to be able to adapt and overcome and change our plans daily don't be afraid to fail because from those failures you will learn at South Bend Industrial Hemp, we are extremely passionate about continuing to move hemp forward and discuss with the legislative body why hemp grain and fiber needs to be treated differently than the cannabinoid sister. Because as you've seen throughout this video today, it is more industrial parts that we are working towards, whether that be bioplastics, bedding, um, car parts, paper, plastic. These are all critical points in the American supply chain that need le different legislative laws and different exemptions and farmers should be allowed to grow without licenses and without restrictions so they can really allow this crop to grow to its full potential.